Hello, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to the Seed Trilling webinar. Thank you all very much for joining. I know we have some clients and partners who are joining here today. Thank you very much for your support and also some points of interest. So if you haven't heard the news already, uh, this webinar will be on WellGuide. This is a project that Sven Inge here, my colleague, has been leading for a long time. And we are finally launching the product this week. So we are very proud and this is an exciting moment for us. Thank you for joining. Some general information before I give the word to Sven Inge. This is a fairly short webinar for about 30 minutes. So we will spend about five to 10 minutes at the end of the session to address any questions that you would have. So feel free to drop any message in the chat if you do have any questions as we go. If you want to remain anonymous, you can drop a private message to me as well. I will leave my icon in the chat so you can message me there. So I think that's it for an introduction. Spending it, please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Alina. Can you hear me, Alina? Oh, yes. Okay, good. Good. Yeah, this is a proud moment for us in eDrilling. We are now releasing uh, the product uh, named uh, WellGuide. Uh, it has has working names like Drilling Advisory or, or the Demo Project or, or a lot of different things. But now the official name is uh, is WellGuide. And what it does, it does uh, automatically uh, optimization uh, in uh, drilling operations for tripping speed for during tripping, flow, ROP, and ROP uh, within the safeguard of the well uh, during drilling. So uh, the benefits, of course, to spend less time on the well, to optimize the performance, uh, and to be able to use existing solutions hardware so that you don't have to rip and replace to get an advisory or an optimization system in front of the driller, uh, to have contactless operation and very low deployment cost. I'll come a bit back to this uh, the deployment cost. Uh, so the technology is uh, is uh, used uh, used is AI is a model based reasoning system uh, where you have a digital twin. Um, this is products that we have had uh, for uh, for decades. Um, this digital twin in this. Um, the context is then uh, uh, initiated for a forward simulation. So we simulate a lot forward in time during a connection to find optimal parameters for the next drilling of a stand or for the next uh, tripping of a stand. Uh, to be able to do optimization, uh, auto calibration is a key enabler. If you don't have calibrated model, uh, then you're not able to do any any optimization. So this is also done periodically by the system. Uh, uh, I'll come a bit back to that as well. Uh, uh, to have transient dynamic model running in operation has also uh, have uh, had some uh, some uh, challenges related to configuration earlier. It's uh, uh, you need experts to to configure this. This is also something we have addressed in this project so that it's very easy to set up and use and we have split between field well and and task related to that so i'll come a bit back to that as well uh, it's cloud native uh, which means that it's an edge infrastructure uh, infrastructure uh, that can be based on a based on a cloud architecture or it could be a pure cloud uh, system so this can either be deployed in uh, Microsoft, Azure, or similar, or it can be deployed on small uh, NIC computers like this. These three uh, NIC computers uh, with the size of an Apple TV uh, can handle up to three uh, continuous uh, wells. Uh, so this is very scalable. It's a scalable system. So you have the digital twin. We add on the optimizations, which scale up and down, uh, uh, initiate a lot of real digital twins uh, ahead to to find the optimal when it's taking uh, then it's taking the the fluid uh, the temperature the cuttings and so on into account when you do optimization it has auto calibration as a separate model it has a well configuration database that i'll come back to and a simplified user interface so all you need to operate this is uh, is um, is uh, chrome and then uh, it's either uh, connecting to uh, to local local on-premises uh, installations or uh, a cloud in installation. Uh, let me just switch directly to a demo because that's much more uh, fun to look at. Uh, 
So this is uh, when you log into the system, this is the, the welcome page that you see where you have all your wells. Uh, uh, so you can, it's split between uh, different fields. Here we have one field, uh, another field and a third field and different wells that's active on this well. So this is something you can scale up and down. You can see here, most of them are active, but some is not active either. So which means you can configure things on beforehand and set them active uh, when you, you would like to do. So quickly, um, uh, why do we have fields and wells and tasks? So it's it ease the configuration. So if I would like to configure a well, uh, then it's, uh, I just, um, uh, you know, uh, I just uh, create a well, and then I get all the different things that's defined for that field directly into this, uh, which means that uh, that I will get uh, the uh, the plan uh, the the different uh, pressure profiles, uh, the the temperature profiles, and other st things directly into the system without uh, being a, without need of doing any copying and pasting related to this. So this is the, uh, the pressure profile, uh, the formations, and so on. But let's say uh, I would like to configure a new well. So let's start to, to, to do that. Uh, first, uh, you need, a, you need um, a trajectory. So I'm just uh, adding a row on this. Uh, and then I'm... Uh, Just a moment, I'm just copying something. So now I'm copying in, uh, in a trajectory. This can be from Excel or from a previous well. So it's very easy to copy and paste directly into. And then I go and, and set up some uh, rig specific things. Uh, this is, uh, I need to specify the block weight. And then I need to specify the task that I'm doing. I'm adding a task. It's uh, very simple. This is 17 and a half inch section I'm gonna do. I select the tubular that I uh, that 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 you have defined for this field. I can edit the nozzle so very quickly to just add the, these things into the system. And then I can save it. Save it on the task. Uh, uh, geometry for the well is also something that you, you pick from libraries. So you just add on very quickly. Okay, I have a riser from 0 to 40. Then I have a conductor, 40 to, to 56. Then I have a 16-inch casing from... So it's it's very quick to set up, and then I have a fluid library. So I add, I, I pick from the library the fluid I, I would like to use, and then I save the task. Uh, when I do, then go to the to the to the um, the well I'm going to start on, then it's for me just uh, to simple to set up the source and then uh, and then launch the task. So if I just uh, find my WitzML server here, and then I select uh, a wellbore, and then there are some WitzML logs here, so I enable them, and then I know that I have drilling from um, the 29th, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and then I launch the task. So then uh, it's launching, and then now it's running. So a well planner will typically uh, set up this prior to operation, so that uh, whoever is responsible for the operation, he just launched the different task as you go. Uh, 
let's then look at uh, the different uh, functionalities we have. Uh, so I'm starting with uh, uh, with uh, with uh, the drilling. Uh, then we're tripping. So what you can see here is uh, is a tripping advisor. Uh, the, on the top left corner here, you see um, you see speed. Uh, uh, this is when you're hoisting and lowering, hoisting and lowering. So this is a trip in sequence. So whenever you uh, whenever you Whenever you do a, 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 a trip in here, you will see this is now running real time on a log. So you see here that it's uh, it's now it's um, hoisting up and down, and then uh, with the speed. So this is the maximum speed going upwards, and this is the maximum speed going downwards. Uh, when you are now moving downwards with pipe, you will uh, um, you will uh, collect the maximum speed and the acceleration, and then you will initiate uh, 22 um, dynamic simulations ahead of time for the next stand in order to find the optimal speed. So the yellow line you see below here, this is the optimal speed that you that this well can handle related to uh, well controlled surge swab. So. And this is also showing here um, uh, historically. Okay, what 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 is the surge swab pressure at the different places that you would like to look at? This is at the casing shoe or at bottom, and so on. Another feature uh, we have added is this uh, drag chart, where you automatically is uh, are collecting all the hook loads. Uh, we are doing buoyancy compensation on it, so which means when you're filling pipe and so on. Uh, then that is compensated for so that you get the correct friction factor from the system. This friction factor is collected and then it is uh, transferred to the real-time token drag model to have a, a real-time updated uh, hook load and, uh, uh, when you're running the system. So now you see it came with a new recommendation here due to the speed that you have. So. Uh, uh, you're running two meters per second here, but you see that the well can handle three meters per second. Uh, you, you might not be able to do that with the drawbox you have, but anyhow, this is showing the room that you have available for uh, for the uh, for the optimization in real time. So it's a real time uh, optimization system. If I then go to the to the drilling advisory screen. Uh, this is then uh, working on the same uh, uh, the same way, uh, which means that it's uh, uh, whenever you make a connection, uh, it's it's picking the flow, the um, um, RPM and ROP at that specific time, uh, taking uh, a median of uh, of uh, of the last. Uh, Drilling stand, which means uh, a median of uh, mud flow in, uh, rotation speed, and ROP, in order to find the optimal values. So, in this case, we have here uh, you are running with uh, an optimal flow rate, an optimal rotation speed, but you have the uh, the window in order to uh, optimize on ROP that you can add on uh, up to 39 meters per uh, uh, per hour related to that. So, so how is this done? So, so this is also taking into account uh, cuttings, so that you, uh, uh, you you take the digital twin when you when you uh, start the optimization uh, with the cuttings concentration, with the temperature distribution, uh, distribution and the fluid distribution, and you use that in order to optimize. So, if you then are uh, outside the boundaries that you've set for. Um, for uh, for so for the, uh, the the cuttings concentration, then that uh, will be skipped and not recommended. So you are recommended in uh, values to optimize within the safe uh, guards of the well uh, automatically. Uh, when you're getting close to a connection, the connection procedure will also show here. So if um, we are a bit five, more than 50 minutes from a connection at the moment, so this is how to run something in in real time. But when we get closer to this, this will uh, this will appear as a, as a, as a connection. We'll uh, come back to that uh, in a moment when we're getting closer to the connection. Uh, uh, of course, it's it's uh, um, every all the graphics that you see here. This is made together with uh, 
uh, a, a drilling contractor of Fjell who was part of the, the project. Uh, so we have had a lot of different work sessions with them related to how this should look like. Um, so the focus is, as you can see, only the added value things, uh, both in, in drilling and in, in tripping, so that you don't show uh, active volume, uh, gain loss, uh, whatever, uh, those things in, inside here. You just show the things that's giving value to the, to the, um, to the operation. Uh, so, so this is the main focus. Uh, this can also be uh, uh, can also be integrated with any system. So, so uh, with Equino, we, where we have tested most of this, this is uh, this is of course then uh, saved to to uh, to Sitecom, uh, and they are displaying this in uh, in Discovery Web uh, for those uh, for them. So that is also. Uh, I'll just now you can uh, you know you can also see that uh, we are getting closer to a connection here. So then you see the connection procedure, how that looks like, and uh, and when the connection is uh, is performed, then it will optimize uh, related to uh, to to the next uh, operation. Uh, uh, we also see uh, there's uh, some uh, messages here. So uh, this is the traditional uh, diagnostic system. Uh, giving alerts uh, uh, to the operation where you come uh, comparing the digital twin with the, the real-time readings in order to to see uh, risk for uh, pack off cutting sped this is they've done some extended extensive bottom off work and so on this is messages that will pop up and you will also see where this is related to the open hole section that that you are in at the moment uh, um, Many times uh, uh, an engineer will like to say, no, okay, uh, it's uh, good that you have a recommendation, but we really need to dig into some details in order to understand this better. So, so all the traditional uh, plotting tools and so on are available uh, as before. So you can quickly uh, go in and, and look on uh, on uh, on uh, uh, traditional plots like this, where you have uh, uh, where you show uh, yeah, all all the traditional drilling parameters together with uh, uh, with the things that is uh, doing optimization. So so you can go in and say, okay, this is the auto calibration. How wh when are we calibrating? Uh, how is the calibrating working? You can see here it's a very good match on, on stamper pressure and ECD uh, on this. So this is done automatically. Nobody has to push any buttons. You can go into the advisory and you can find out, okay, uh, how does this advisory really work? What, uh, what speed is it picking when it's doing this uh, median average and so on? So all the traditional stuff that you as an engineer might want to look at is also, of course, uh, still available, but everything is, is within this, um, uh, this uh, cloud uh, architecture so that you can easily access it to Google Chrome or, or similar. Okay, this was the, the, the quick uh, demonstration. So again, it's, uh, uh, one of the things that it's very scalable. Uh, it's easy to configure a new well, uh, a new field. Uh, uh, it's deployable in Azure uh, or Amazon or whatever, and then uh, and then you have the, the 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 capabilities of scaling up and down automatically without uh, uh, having the need for any hardware to install on the rig site or uh, anyhow anywhere. Okay, Thank, thanks for your attention so far. Maybe there are some, uh, uh, some times for some questions. So uh, if you have any, please, uh, please let us know. And yeah, so far, no questions in the chat, but what I'll do in the meantime, just drop our email if anyone wants to reach out after this uh, broadcasting as well, if they want to reach out directly. But uh, let's give it a couple of seconds if anyone has any questions. Let's see. Hopefully the chat feature should be working.
no questions so far. I guess that's a good sign that it's understandable. That's what they usually yeah. said in school, at least. Yeah. <laughs> Crystal clear. <laughs> Crystal clear, right. Yeah. Yes, yeah. a question from Matt here. Does this require full Wilson, et cetera, installation in the background as the engine? Wilson, I guess you're referring to. Yeah, Wilson. yeah, I, I am familiar with this. Yes, yeah. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, the, of course, the full engine is in the background, so that everything is installed in um, in either a cloud environment in Azure or it's installed in uh, on the the local on-premise installation. So, so the full Wellsim is is uh, is used uh, when you uh, when you do this multiple forward simulation so it's a full well sim that is uh, simulating ahead and we've done a lot of job related to optimize this so you can imagine yourself you having uh, 30 dynamic digital twins or digital well sims uh, transient that is uh, simulating search web uh, with the different different scenarios in, in 30 seconds doing a trip in so it's a it's a really a step change on the model side also to be able to do this so yes the full well sim is is but it's it's uh, it's dockerized so it's scaled up and down automatically so that's the neat about it are you simulating one stand ahead? That's a question here as well. Good question. Yes, we are simulating one stand ahead um, uh, uh, related, but of course, uh, taking into account the cuttings uh, um, movement related to that, we take the cuttings as we as it is uh, and, and simulating the next, next stand ahead. Uh, for tripping, uh, it's also taking the conditions of the well um, uh, when tripping, you can also use it for running casings and screens and so on. So if you if you start if if it's a screen and you start to rotate at the end or do some pumping, that will also be uh, included in the algorithm when you do the suggestions of the speed that you can handle. Okay, I hope that was clarifying. No further questions yet. Uh, one thing I want to mention, if, if you are interested after joining this webinar to receive material on WellGuide, that can be provided as well. Just reach out to us with the emails here in the chat. Okay, no further questions, it seems. So if no more questions, oh, yes, Scott here. Is the recommended ROP based upon the ECD restrictions only? It's based on the ECD restrictions only. Uh, um, uh, yeah, related to, uh, but it also related to um, cuttings concentration. So if you, you cannot, uh, 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 you cannot um, cuttings concentration and cut things transport ratio so you can uh, you will not get any recommendation that will uh, gives you problems with cuttings so it's cuttings and uh, and uh, poor slash frac pressure yeah he's also asking about uh, cutting loading as well yeah so it okay. takes into account the cutting loading okay very good All right, no further questions. I think we will wrap up here a couple of minutes early, but okay, here we go. Including cuttings carrying capacity. Yes, there's a cuttings uh, there's a cutting slip model uh, inside the the, the system. So um, uh, if you if you stand still for a while, cuttings will slip, and that's also taking uh, into account. And the cutting carrying capacity is we call it cuttings transport ratios it's 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 how it's uh, the fluid is um, um, can handle the cutting movements yes so it's included yes another question from Matt here so will alert if solids start to settle uh, there's not an automatic uh, uh, alert, but that uh, you will see on the um, in, in the traditional displays, you will see that uh, uh, that the cuttings will slip, uh, or the this uh, yeah. Uh, so that's that's possible to see on on traditional cuttings concentration displays. Okay, very good. It doesn't seem like we have more questions coming in. 
Tusen tack, Sess Matt. All good. Tusen, tusen tack to you, <laughs> Matt. <laughs> okay, thank you, everyone. I think we will wrap up here. If you do have any questions, please reach out to us after this webinar. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you to Svenning as well for doing this demo. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. All right. Bye-bye.